because then people weren't really playing as much old school as they do now. Yeah. Oh, so you brought, I, I want to give you your flowers. Like, I feel like you took us back to the essence of how we used to listen to music. Yes. I mean, now when I hear like my son, you know, my son's 16 and I say, let's say cats under 30, right? Their vibe for old school, I want to say is probably 10% of their repertoire, maybe 15% where my age group and down is say from 50 to 30, we have this we have this wide band of music yes. from 80s, 70s, 90s, 2000s. Like we we watched, I feel like my my age group, we literally are in the birthplace of hip hop. Yes. Like literally, yeah. like it, it, it hip hop got started a, a few summers or something before I kicked, you know. Yeah, got and, and we grew up with hip hop. Like yeah. we really yeah. did. And yes. it was um the thing about it was like I kind of owe it to to like a lot of us DJs being unwilling to play those old school records for like the younger generation. Right. I don't want to just blame it on them because like now that they've heard them, they like, like them. I, yeah, they're, they're like, oh, yo, you just, I didn't know that this Biggie sample came from that. Oh, I didn't know Drake sampled, you know, Hamilton and whatever for, you know, <laughs> the best I ever had. I didn't even know that was a sample. Like, and then exactly. I was Exactly. And now they love, they got an affinity for this type of music. And it was because we introduced them, we introduced the music to them when the world stopped. And then they looked around. Like, one day DJ Envy of The Breakfast Club called me. This was, like, the first week of the quarantine. Mm -hmm. And he said, bro, this is the first time that I could dance with my family. You know, like, I never ah, forgot that. Ah, that's hot. Just as a DJ, like, we tend to not play music when we're home. You know, we're working all the time. You, come, you know, that's the last thing you, you're going to do. Like, I didn't even have turntables at home, which is also why I wasn't DJing in the beginning. Because right. I didn't have turntables. I didn't believe in that. I was like, once I'm home, I'm home. I'm off but the clock. Like, now we we've introduced young, this you know younger generations not just one you know there are people in their thirties that have never heard Sister Sledge thinking of you until I kept playing it over and over and they're like yeah yo this feels good yo you know, those and, um, lot and, and the thing that um a lot of cats now don't know if you're not of a certain age back in the day they actually played all those instruments. Yes. Like every song that you hear that's an old school song, there was real musicians playing. There was no machines back then. There was nothing to help your voice. You had to sound like that record for real. True. And 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 they and they, they had nobody knows what a dad is now. Like nobody knows what a cassette tape is. Like I said to my son, you ever heard of a remix? He was like, What? Like they don't even know like how we would take a sample from an old song. Do it one way and then remix it again and then throw like four or five people. They don't even True. do that no more in music. True. No, they don't. <laughs> it's, I mean, but but it's it's probably that way because we didn't have the resources that they have now. Because right. if we had these resources, then we would have made music the same way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I I do respect the process, you know. Like I, and I respect um I respect the way people make music now. You know, like back then you had to like take your two inch reel, record it. And then you had to overnight your two inch reel yep. to the West coast and then wait for them to do it. Like now they send out stems and we can get a song done quickly. And I don't knock that. I'm like, wait, I actually love it. You know, that's does part it, of does the music. Okay. Cause I'm a, I'm a old school, like music lover used to go to, to the tower records and Virgin records yes. music store and buy a real CD in a, in an album. Right. Do you think the texture, cause I saw, um, DJ Quick say something that was so profound. He said um, what he liked about the tape as opposed to digital is the tape captured the vibration and the energy was recorded on that piece of tape. Yes. So whatever the feeling was, whatever the, the, the energy you brought while you were singing or rapping, that was captured in that frequency on that piece of tape. I, I agree. was like, damn, 100%. that's crazy. He said, so that's why the sound is different. Yes. So now when you do digital, even though it's cleaner, how does digital not allow for that feeling that DJ uh, Quinn was mean, talking about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, tape, bro, like tape. Mm -hmm. One, having something tangible, like, yeah, that frequency is going to be extremely different. And it's not going to be as warm as it as it was if you record digital versus putting it on a two inch reel, which is why some people still like like true audio files, like still listen to vinyl, you know, yeah. like they still like they'll go out and buy vinyl. Like I, I have vinyl. Look, I mean, the other day I got, uh, you know, I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear this new Beyonce album in, on, on a turntable, you know? See what it sounds like. Yeah, like, right. you know, and um, even though she recorded it digitally, but there are people who like Lenny Kravitz, for instance. Okay. Lenny still records on, 
on like on on uh, two inch reels, you know, like the old I mean, school, the old school way. Like that's that's a vibe, though. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you said, that's you, a vibe. You know, it's a it's a true vibe. You know, if you if you are if you love music that way, like I think that part is important. But if you didn't grow up like that, and you are used to making music the way that it's being made now, right? You don't really know the difference. You don't know the sound. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize there was such a unique difference until I just happened to catch uh, DJ Quick talking about it like that, and it made me really appreciate um, being able to to hear music that was recorded that way before. Sure, sure, like sure. if you hear like a old school, let's go, uh, let's go back, Bobby Womack, or let's go, oh, uh, yeah. uh, Evelyn Champagne King, you know. Or, you know, like uh, Ring My Bell, Anita Ward, right? Like, we go back in those days. Those kind of songs now, when you play them and you mix them even with some new stuff, it's it's bananas. No, it is. Um, yeah, even like me just being a DJ and playing a lot of the older records, yeah, they, it doesn't feel good. Uh, a lot of it also comes from people not really being true audio engineers as well. Okay. You know, you do have people that are mixing records for like, you know, today's artists that are winning Grammys and that are super dope. What, you know, even young guru, he came up, he went to school for this. A lot of the kids didn't have, um, and I'm only saying this because I remember what it was like when we were coming up. Absolutely. When, when we didn't have budget for, for, you know, studio time or proper studio time. I mean, when you think about our very first record, South Bronx was recorded, you know, at, at, in someone's home on a 16 track. Or if you think about like EPMD, like their first album, um, Strictly Business, that whole album was recorded on one 24 inch reel. What? One two inch reel. I'm sorry, two inch reel, but like where well, you only had 24 tracks and you had like 12 minutes on a two inch reel and they literally figured out how to like <laughs> use eight of the tracks to do one song and another eight to do another and four tracks to do like they had an entire Whoa. album. Because it was all based on we didn't have music for like musicians. We, you know, you had to make an album with ten grand. Yeah. You know, so that was all. So you had to be resourceful. Yeah, and, and it was all based on, you know, just using samples, and that's what we had. You know, like now a lot of the kids, you know, and actually I don't want to call them kids. Very disrespectful. A lot of the music, you know, the recording artists and producers, and you know, they have they have unlimited tracks now. Unlimited. You know, they have access to. You know, you know, uh, um, auto tune. Or, I, I would, or, I'm gonna take you back. So, um, when I was doing Def Comedy Jam, mm -hmm. you know, uh, shout out to my boy Kid Capri. Kid Capri had a crate. I call him the crate man. So this is back in the day. Uh, you know, you did. A, is this his early '90s? Kid Capri would come and he would have at least 20 crates of records that were albums. It was all alphabetical order or some kind of genre. He had it organized a certain way. So when he was doing the spinning, and they were all in milk crates, and he would just go boom, bam, boom. And I'd be like, yo, back in the day, he was traveling, carrying all this music, cut to bam. Now you got a computer, you don't need all that. You don't have your, your man computer, back. Computer, you don't even need that. Which, which we do. I mean, you can have your songs on the thumb drive. <laughs> yeah, you just... Now that's how most EDM DJs, that's actually how all EDM DJs play. They, they come in with, like, music in their pockets and just drop them. You know, right now it's it's about how you how do you get the music to the people. 